Hello everyone. Um, this is the first video that I've ever made. Um, it is involving my testimony. It started on August 19th, 2017 and um, is a vision that Heavenly Father has given me that I wish was uh, that I wish I could could have shared sooner but being inspired by events that have been taking place um, I have felt the strength come to me to finally put it out there and to let it be known the mercy of God and by His grace that that I was snatched out of the abyss that I had dug myself into and I would I would like to share with you and I know that a lot of videos run uh, a long time but I'm just want to get into it I'm gonna put it out there and uh, please if anybody would like to read it I wrote it all down and I wouldn't be able to say everything in just this video so I'm gonna make a couple videos of each chapter so there's gonna be a continuation but I'm gonna speak the vision and just get through as much as I can so I'm just gonna jump right into it so it started um, it was like my own road to Damascus we were me and my wife were in our car driving and um, she she said she had spoken to God and that God had spoken to her and that he had a message for me and that I was to meet God in a desert in my dreams and that he had a message for me there and that I had to spend seven days with him in this desert and I didn't have a clue as to what she was talking about like I'm like, what do you mean, like, in a desert, in a dream? But having been a long time um, experienced dreamer, I have gained some kind of control over my dreams to where I had the ability to affect the outcome of dreams, to lucid dream, uh, very vivid dreams. So knowing this, uh, and God having known this, he told her that I was to meet him in a dream. But right then and there, as soon as she told it to me, uh, you know, and I thought those thoughts, like, she told me you didn't meet him in the desert for seven days, and I was like, well, what does that mean? Like, how do I... I just didn't get it. But right then and there, a vision came to my mind. And in it, I was in a desert. I didn't have to go to sleep to go to this desert. Um, and in this, and I'm still in the car and I'm listening to her, but my mind had like gone to this place and in front of me, in my mind's eye, there was this U-shaped tree sticking out of the ground about 10, 15 feet tall. And it was made out of wood, dark wood. And it was coming out of the ground and then split into a U, like almost like a perfect U into the ground. And this tree looked at old, it looked at dead. It was terrifying to me with a realization like what is happening? What am I looking at? I'm looking at this tree. I'm somehow like in this place. I'm not asleep. It, it, everything was just kind of like confusing to me. And I'm looking at this tree, and in my mind's eye, I start to look around this tree and look around everywhere. And I'm standing on a dry lake bed. It looked like a lake bed. The floor was cracked, as if there used to be water there. But the f it had all dried up. You see it in dry lake beds. The floor was cracked and dry. And out of it was sticking this U-shaped tree. Then, as I looked around more, I noticed that 
there was mountain ranges off to the left, like miles and miles away. These tall, tall mountain ranges shrouded in darkness. And I'm looking around and I look up and I see the clouds. And it, there's a storm and it is moving these clouds and they're swirling like swirling and swelling and they're so close I felt like they were just right on top of me and at, I, at this point like I'm like terrified terrified of what I'm seeing and I'm just stuck paralyzed staring at all of this and I'm looking at it and the whole time my wife is talking to me right next to me driving the car and she's telling me all this stuff that God showed her in a vision and half of me is listening and the other half is just I would say more than half is just perplexed confused and I, I don't tell her I'm not telling her that that what I'm seeing or anything I'm just looking at it like like am I imagining this so I'm trying to bat this image away I'm trying to push it out of my mind and I'm talking every trick I knew to get it out I was doing and it would when I push it out of my mind it come right back with the sense of like force and urgency be like Whoa! and it'd be right there in front of me I'm trying like get like get out of here like I'm trying to like like batting away a fly or a mosquito I'm trying to like push this thing out of my mind and it keeps coming back <sighs> right in front of me nothing I could do get to get rid of this image and this place I'm looking at so we make it home it's like one o'clock at night you know, and this whole time, I'm just trying to get rid of it. I don't know what it is. I'm terrified. You know, at this point, like, I wasn't, I'm not a religious, I wasn't a religious person. I didn't believe in, you know, uh, I can honestly, I didn't believe in Jesus Christ. I was a sinner and one of, like, the worst kind. I was a horrible person, you know, and I'm not recognizing that. I'm already in the desert. This vision of message that God had for me had already come to me. And all I kept doing was trying to get it away. So we get home and we're getting into bed, you know, and winding down. And my wife tells me, like, God wants you to go to this desert. You know, that's what he told me. And he told me to let you go, to not bother you, to take care of the kids, to give you time and space. To be in this desert and you know and I couldn't tell her that I'm all I'm already looking at this place you know I don't have to go to bed to go there like it's already here you know and um, so we go to bed and the last thing I see is this u-shaped tree it's the last thing I seen before I drifted off to sleep I woke up and I don't remember having a dream but as I woke up, I noticed that this U-shaped tree is still in front of me. It is still in my mind's eye. And now I'm thinking, like, what is this? This is something. This is something beyond me. But nonetheless, I'm still trying to get it out. I'm still trying to push it away. I'm trying to get it away from me. It's terrified me now. Like... I had to go to work later that night and I worked graveyard. I'm actually at work right now. I work graveyard at Lowe's Home Improvement. You know, and I have hundreds of t attempts to get rid of this thing. So on my way to work, you know, I get here and still trying to bat it away. And I get to work and I remember standing in the aisle thinking about this and I push it away and it comes right back right in front of me with the sense of urgency that like shook me to my core it shook me 
to it like bypassed all of my fear and everything else and it terrified me more than I was already it scared the crap out of me and when that happened I I thought to myself look at it look at it God said he had a message for you in the desert you are in this desert now look at it stop pushing it away because the more you keep pushing it away eventually it's going to stop coming back and do you want that and it just it made me think like all right i'm gonna look at it i'm gonna look at this place i'm gonna look at this u-shaped tree that's dead and scary as hell so i stop what i'm doing and i just stand there i close my eyes and I put all of my attention on this U-shaped tree, on this desert place. It's a wasteland. I mean, there's nothing there. There's no other sign of life or anything. It was just this tree in the middle of this cracked ground. And I put all of my attention on this place. And I go to this desert. A portion... A, majority of my mental capacity to perceive everything I like go to this place and but when I get there the u-shaped tree is no longer in front of me but I'm standing in the in a desert on sand dunes and I'm on a sand dune and I'm on a tall one and I'm looking and as far as I can see is nothing but sand dunes. As far as I can see, it looked like waves that were stationary. They weren't moving or anything, but they just looked like waves to me. You know, and I'm standing there and I'm like, what the hell? Like, what is happening? And I'm here and I'm there. Like, I'm in that place. I can feel the sand on my feet. I can feel the warmth of the sand. I can hear the crunching of the sand. I can like feel the heat. It's hot in this place. It's a desert. And I'm terrified. Like I'm a grown man and I was scared out of my ass like and I don't know what the hell to do. And then all of a sudden this feeling comes to me and this feeling starts to grow and this feeling is telling me as I search it to walk walk through this desert that you've never been to you don't you nothing like I don't have a compass I don't have food water I don't have anything guiding me I am lost in this place until this feeling tells me to walk Feeling the sand under my feet, I knew that I could walk if I wanted to. But I was terrified. I was terrified of for all so many reasons. Like, I couldn't even run through them all. I was terrified that if I walked farther into this desert, that somehow I would be leaving this world that I was born into behind. As if, like, I was walking to, like, my death or something. I was terrified. I didn't have a clue. No, all of my logic went out the window. All of everything I've ever knew went out the window. I realized that I didn't know anything at this point. I didn't know how I was in this place. I didn't know how, how I got there, where I was, where to go, nothing. I didn't have anything. It humbled me. It made me feel like I was not in control. And it terrified me. It was so, it was such a different feeling that I've never felt before. I was so in control of my life, my body, my mind, everything. Nothing could have prepared me for that. So I'm terrified running through these millions of thoughts and I'm standing in this place and this feeling is telling me like walk, 
just walk. So with everything I had, with all the courage I could muster up, with all of my being, with every single cell in my body, I lift my foot up and place it out in front of me like a baby deer walking for the first time. And place it out in front of me. And I felt my foot sink into the sand as I took my first step. And before I knew it, I'm walking through this desert. I'm walking through these sand dunes. And this whole time, I'm at work still. I couldn't have imagined being in two different places at the same time. And if somebody would have told me this, I probably wouldn't have believed it. I had to have been there to believe it. And God knew my heart and mind, and he put me there. So I'm walking through this desert. And as I walk through sand dunes and sand dunes, up sand dunes, down sand dunes, not knowing where to go, but with this feeling I felt guiding me forward. I didn't, and after like, after I walked, like I became accustomed to it. Like, this feeling's telling me to walk. Well, I'm gonna trust this feeling I feel. That's the only thing I do know is what I'm feeling right now. And it's telling me to walk. This feeling is my compass. That's what I call it. This compass is pointing me to walk forward, just to keep walking forward. So that's what I did. I walked. I walked forward. And as I walked forward, I noticed that things I'd been carrying my whole life weren't with me no more. None of that stuff mattered here in this place. My angers, my insecurities, my frustrations, my everything did not matter here. It didn't help me here. It didn't do nothing for me here. And the feeling that gave me was so liberating. I felt like a child again. A child being able to walk and explore. You know, as a kid, I used to think, like, I want to find a place like Moses felt or found in the mountain. You can just walk somewhere and find God there. And he found the burning bush. And, you know, and then as I got older, like, the, those that the, those hopes and dreams and were like kind of taken from me as the logical road took over you know I became a logical thinker and I'm just like there can't be a place like that everything's discovered like there people found it all you know and but that feeling was there I felt like a child again as I walked and as I walked like I sh all these layers just kind of just fell off of me. And I wasn't burdened. You know, and when I didn't have all of those things, I was able to think more clearly and see my life for what it was and start to do the work there that I couldn't do in this world for some reason. You know, and I, so I'm like doing all these works and I'm thinking all these thoughts, thoughts that I've never thought before. And that would bring up feelings that I've never felt before. Feelings of, like, we are all, like, like, how am I able to be here? Like, God snatched me out of this, this black and white world that I used to live in. And I used to think, for what? Why did he, me, snatched me out of it? Who was I for him to do that to? You know, and it just solidified to me that everybody is important to him. Even me. You know, and I didn't grow up like that. I didn't grow up thinking like that. In fact, I grew up thinking that we were all the same somehow. Or that none of it mattered. You know, and, and it just it's just robbing me of any arguments that I used to have. It's taking away everything from me and replacing it with the impossible becoming possible. It it made more sense to me in those moments that 
this logical world is not supposed to govern our life, but faith, something I never knew. I didn't know what faith was. People used to tell me, oh, I used to have questions about church, and I used to be like, well, what about this? And they'd be like, well, you just got to have faith. I'm like, that's not answering my question. Like, you know, I don't know what, what that means. And then in this place, as I walk through these deserts, I had to trust in something I didn't quite understand to get an answer of why I needed to walk through this place. You know, I started to put trust in something I couldn't see, but I felt it. That gave me an understanding that far surpassed any logic that logic could have gave me. You know, and it just rocked me to my foundation. It rocked me to the core, to where I was able to find out who I truly was and who I didn't want to be no more. It showed me what the world and myself and my troubles and angers had built up. And it changed that for me. It changed it for me because I'm in this place I've never been, except by the power of God. I couldn't imagine the things I went through in this desert. Not my logical mind. You know, and I'm walking through this place, and I'm going through all of this eternal dialogue and change, you know, and I'm questioning everything I thought I knew. And it's being replaced by understanding that I could have never achieved on my own. I thought I had control of everything, science, I knew science in and out about the world and all this stuff that we're taught, but we aren't taught about this other spiritual self that is with us and in us. We are shut off from ourself and our, and our spirits. And in this place, I'm just reconnecting with it, reconnecting with this my own spirit. Finding out who I wanted to be and how I turned into this person that I hated. I was unhappy. I thought the world was bland and mundane. Like, there was no, like, flavor. There was no beauty in it. It was boring to me. And all of this shocked me. It shocked me to my core and it rewrote, it rewired everything as I walked through this desert. You know, and my trouble, there's so many things that were going on in my life at the time. Me and my wife were on the verge of divorce. We hated each other. But that's not how we first came to be. We were madly in love with each other. You know, but we were so stubborn and stuck in our ways that there was no room for love in that stubborn and hateful way. You know, and all of this is like showing me stuff like you love your wife. You know, you care about her. You've always, this is what you wanted your whole life is to find a love like this. And now all this stuff has come in the way and you're unhappy. You're unhappy because because I was without God. I didn't believe in Jesus Christ. I used to persecute people and talk badly to people about people that that believed in it, that needed Jesus and church to quit addictions. I used to think of it like you're using it as a crutch. Like you can do it. But that is the vanity, that's like the vanity of men thinking that we can do anything ourselves. We can do plenty, but we ain't going to get as far as we can with God. God can take us farther than we ever thought we could possibly go. My testimony that I'm speaking now is proof of it. So I walked through this desert for days. And I'm finding all of this out. Stuff I've never knew. I could have never have thought because of the barriers and walls and blockages I had put up. 
you know, and the closer I get to myself, finding out who I am, it is just liberating. And I'm like happily walking through this desert, you know, and uh, on one particular day, I meditated and I was like, I wasn't, I'm going to devote time to walk through this desert. You know, and, uh, but before I do that, I'm walking through this desert, and one day I reach this top of the sand dune, and I look off to the left of me, and I see this massive, massive sandstorm. It's massive. I've seen pictures of sandstorms on like YouTube and uh, internet and stuff like that, but this surpasses all of that. This thing is as tall as the eye can see and as far on both sides as the eye can see. And it's headed towards me. It's miles away though. And I'm reaching this sand dune looking, I mean, re walking this sand dune and I'm looking off to the left. I'm staring at this wall of sand, dark, wall of sand coming it's thick and I know that it's coming like it's gonna overtake me eventually as I walk there's no getting around it you know and uh, so I'm walking this feelings guiding me to keep walking keep walking so I continue to walk you know and uh, right before it comes, it's it's getting close to me. It's gonna like take me, and I, I don't know. It it just like right here next to me, and all I can think is like just keep walking, walk forward. You've walked this far, like trust this feeling, strengthen it, and walk through this no matter what. You know, and I can feel the sand wind starting to hit me, like burst of wind. Sand's getting thrown at me, and I can feel it hitting me. You know, and and I'm just like, I I've never been in a damn storm like that. Like I don't know what to expect. I'm from Los Angeles. Like, you know, I've been on the beach. Like that's the closest I've gotten to sand. You know, and uh, so right before this storm overtakes me I just kind of like back away from this vision like terrified you know and um, I need to work up the courage to progress further to this desert to face this storm that's, come, that's like overtaking me you know and I set some time aside after I got out of work to meditate I'm going to meditate, I'm going to face this storm, and I'm going to walk through it, you know, so I get off of work, I get home, everyone's asleep, and I sit on the couch, and I meditate, and I calm my mind, calm my internal dialogue, quieted it down so it's not talking, you know, and I feel myself, just my mind just downshifts into the lower consciousness, you know, and, uh, and I'm back in this desert, and I'm climbing this sand dune, and the storm's right there, I take a deep breath, as it's, it's massive coming, you know, and I take a deep breath, and I face it, and I walk into it, not, never knowing when I was going to be in store like I had no idea what's gonna happen and I'm walking into this storm the first thing that happens is that all this sand just hits me in the face hits me in the mouth my nose ears everything it just blinds me and it's whipping like it I can just associate it to like walking underwater in a current like, my legs are being forced on all sides by wind and sand. My body's being, like, pushed around on all sides by wind and sand. 
my eyes, my vision is gone. I can't open my eyes because Sam's going to get in it. I'm trying to cover my face, trying to cover everything in different ways, like trying to stop this sand from getting through. It is like blinding me and I can't hear anything other than this wind and sand being kicked around. You know, and uh, so I'm trying to walk through this desert like that, uh, through this sandstorm. And the only idea that I could have thought, or that I thought of at the time was to take off my shirt and tie it around my face. So that's what I did. I took off my shirt and I tied it around my face. I felt for this feeling that was telling me to walk forward. I felt for it and when I felt it, I tried to focus in on it. And when I felt it, it felt strengthened to keep walking. So with that as motivation, I moved my legs forward. I moved my body forward, you know, and I'm walking through this as best as I could. I was not prepared for that. Nothing could have prepared me for it. So I'm walking through this sandstorm trying to, and I'm getting slammed by sand, you know, and uh, I can't see where I'm going. I have no idea what's in front of me. I can't see anything. And all I can get is pelted by sand. Burst of wind hitting me with sand. And it, the struggle came in my mind and heart. I started, it was so difficult. I started to trust in the fact that, well, not trust, I started to lack trust in my spiritual heart or this feeling that I was guiding me forward that I was going to be okay if I can if I just walk forward I had to like see why where I was walking to think I was going to like to be like oh you're okay because you can see what's in front of you so all of this stuff starts playing on me and then I start questioning like well why are you doing this anyways why are you walking through this you don't have to do it like and with each thought, like, the storm got stronger. Each thought of of doubt, the storm got even stronger. With each doubt, like, with each thought of insecurity or, or fear, the storm got stronger. And it's rocking me, hitting me, boom, like, wind coming. And I can't prepare myself for which angle this wind is coming from. And it's knocking me off my step it's knocking me off my my motivation it's it's beating me down you know and it it wears me down to the point where where i'm just about to give up and right when i feel like that a wind so strong hits me boom and rips off my shirt that I tied to my face. It rips it off and I just like was hopeless. Like the only thing that was kind of protect giving me any type of protection in my eyes or face or any my mouth, my nose was gone. And I'm terrified. I lose that feeling that was and I stop walking. I couldn't, I felt lost. Like I lost my compass, I lost my map, I lost everything. And I'm just stuck in this place now. No more exploring like a kid, n none of that. All of it was gone. And all these insecurities came. All these fears and doubts came. And I'm like, these things like came as if like they were waiting to jump me in my weakest moment and I just it was such a horrible feeling that I gave up in that moment and no longer did I f in the storm was a merc it was it had it was a tyrant the storm was a merciless tyrant on me it gained so much strength that it was able to like whip me around and throw me around as if I was a rag doll. 
and I'm being thrown through this place like I wasn't a 300 pound man and it's beating me up and it's beating me up and I'm hopeless I would open my mouth to like scream for help and it would just get filled with sand I couldn't feel the ground I was lost and it was such a horrible feeling but it wasn't a feeling that was foreign to me it was a feeling that I had felt my whole life and up until I started walking this desert I didn't know the difference when I started walking in this desert for once a brief moment I felt I felt like I was found like I had found land as if I was lost at sea the whole time and I'm like I'm at the whim of this storm and it's blowing me all over the place and I feel myself being slammed down to the ground slammed boom by this wind as if it grabbed me and threw me down and I feel all this wind smashing on me and in that moment I could feel tears coming down my face and they were just getting dried in the sand and getting taken away my screams were filled with sand I couldn't mouth anything so with my mind and body and heart I called out to God for one of the first times in my life I asked God to help me. You know, and I'm being hit by the sand and I'm still smashed on the ground and I asked Heavenly Father, like, help me, give me a space to, like, think of something. Leave me a space to, to breathe. Give me relief from this. And then I felt the sand not hitting me no more. And it just, like, I was like, what is happening? But I'm still in the sand. As if the sand just stopped, like, touching me. You know, and I unbury myself out of the sand. And I look around me. And I'm in this ball. This invisible ball. And I can still see the storm going all around me. And I can feel like the force of it on the outside of this ball. It was perfectly surrounding me all the way around. And I cried. I cried on my knees. And I thanked God. I thanked Him for this space, for like coming to my aid, like... It was such a horrible feeling being lost. And in that moment of feeling like that, I called on Heavenly Father and He answered me. You know, and it just, it humbled me. I cried. Grown men crying in the middle of a desert that he's never been to, lost, getting beat up. And I cry to him and I ask him to give me this space and he gave me this space. And I prayed and I prayed to him and I thanked him with all of my heart. Just for a little bit of relief. So I'm meditating on my couch still. I had gotten off work, I meditated to all this. And I saw this felt all this, went through all this, and my body on the chair started getting tired, I felt it, and I could feel myself, like, my head was barely, like, sinking, and I'm, like, conscious while this is happening, and I know it's happening, and I'm praying in this circle that God had given me, while my body on the couch is slowly getting tired, and my head goes down, and right when it touches my chest, 
like that right when it touches my chest the the ball disappears and I'm hit with the biggest gust of wind ever it hit me so hard that that it snapped me back onto the couch and it rocked me into the couch like I didn't just like pick my head up it literally shook my whole body on the couch I half expected to see sand in my living room it was that strong with so much force you know and it was it was it was life changing not just superficially it was life changing up to this point too it changed everything and I don't mean like uh, I don't even know how to it changed me to my core I noticed and felt that everything I had built up in myself my foundation my structure of thought belief my perspective on the world how my heart worked how I cared how I loved the list goes on were restructuring themselves old factory wiring default settings that had like solidified themselves in my mind body and in heart like were being remolded restructured you know and that just it was such a it was such a huge transition for me it changed it was changing everything you know and I was starting to understand faith like like faith is to me is you know it's it answers so much more than any logic could have any textbook any course you can take in class anything that you could have been told but you have to find it yourself and once you find it it answers the questions that you've always wanted answered something I would have never have thought or believed in you know and I was like God is real I know he's real there's no doubt in my mind that he's alive and he sees me he sees you, he sees me, he sees everything, and there is nothing or no one that he does not see, or nothing that he doesn't, like, that he can't do, you know, and I'm, like, going through all this, and it's just, like, it's just blowing my mind, you know, and, um, so, you know, some time goes by, and I'm like, I need to go back to the desert. I need to finish this journey, you know, and I get home from work again, and I meditate, and I go back to the desert, and I find myself buried in sand, and the storm is still going on. But it doesn't have the strength that it used to have. It doesn't seem alive, like it's trying to kill me. You know, it seems like it's it's there to blind me and distract me. But it doesn't have that force that it had before. So I had bury myself out of sand. F search myself for that feeling, for that compass. After pondering and pondering over everything, finding answers in my waking life, in my in this world that I was born into, and then going back to that with that strength, that renewal, with the understanding that God is with me, that He didn't leave me there. You know, He didn't He didn't leave me in the desert by myself. He was with me the whole time. So with all of that I go back to the desert. I'm burying myself out of the sun and find that feeling and I start walking again. Then I'm walking through this desert, praising God. Just, it seems like 
it's the fuel for this engine that is moving through this desert. Me. You know, and I want to stay close to him now. Like, it keeps me close. I'm going to pray this whole time. I'm in this desert. You know, it's the only relief that I can get through this storm. So it keeps me close to him. And I'm praying walking through this storm. And I'm walking and walking, thinking all of these thoughts, strengthening that feeling in me even more. Because I can't see. I need When I start doubting, I have to trust in this, this feeling more than what my eyes or nose or mouth or anything can, my senses can detect that I can somehow control or manipulate my what's in front of me or how to get there, something. I have to surrender myself to this feeling and to Heavenly Father to get through this desert. So that's what I'm doing. I'm walking and walking. And I notice the storm starting to die down after a long time. And I'm walking through this. And eventually, I don't feel the storm. It dissipates and it goes away or something. Like, I don't feel it. You know, but I was so used to walking with my eyes closed that that I didn't, like, think to open it once I found, uh, found out that, like, I wasn't in the storm no more, but uh, once I realized, all right, sand's not hitting me, I'm going to open my eyes, and when I do, I open my eyes, and for the first time, I noticed, well, the first time, like, when I started walking, it was, like, daytime, you know, and this was the first transition of a day after weeks and, like, months from walking in this desert, it seemed like that long. It was nighttime. And I'm like blown away like like oh I didn't even like fathom time in this place. I didn't think of day, night, twelve o'clock, three it's about this time, nothing like that. And I'm like blown away, like, oh wow, it's it's nighttime. And I look up and I see these most beautiful stars. I don't see a moon. I see all these beautiful stars. They're so bright and they feel like they're just, they're, they're so close as if I can touch them. And I'm looking around and like I said, I try to logically place myself in the world that I was born into by science, everything. I try to understand everything I could at a young age. I wanted to be an astronomer. Stars were something that I loved. And I looked up at this sky, at these stars and I noticed that there wasn't any constellation that I've ever saw before. They weren't stars I've seen before or even came close to like, oh, that could be like the Big Dipper or anything, nothing like that. Nothing looked familiar. There was no moon. And I'm looking at these stars as if like for the first time, as if I was on another planet in another galaxy. And it's just awe and I'm like in awe I'm it's just so beautiful you know we look up at the star, stars now and we're like oh that's the Big Dipper you know it you know some people have beautiful views of the stars you know but I see in this place just it put me in awe I'm like dumbfounded like I have no words I'm looking at these stars I've never seen before and it just blows me away. And I can't I, I can't help but cry. Like, you know, all these walls have been torn down. I'm like this emotional giant in this place now. Like, you know, I've never cried so much in my life. You know, and I'm looking at these stars and I start to cry. And eventually, like, I, I start to keep walking. But the whole time, I'm just looking up because I have this feeling guiding me forward. And I trust it. Like, I, I don't need to look. I'm not going to fall into a ditch. I'm not going to fall into a hole. I'm not going to stub my toe. This feeling's guided me. It's like looking out for me. And I'm just looking up, walking. And I look down, and I'm on this long sand dune. It's like elongated. And all the way up ahead of me, I see something moving on the ground. <clears throat> 
and I'm like, what the heck? Like, this is the first time I've seen anything alive. No plants, no animals, nothing. And I see this thing moving on the ground, and it's kind of like moving towards me. And I'm walking, and I'm still looking at it, and it's getting closer. And as it got closer, I noticed that it was a snake. And it's slithering in the sand on the same sand dune I'm on. We're going to, like, walk into each other, you know, and I just keep walking. I don't get scared or anything like that, you know, and I'm walking, and this snake, eventually me and it walk right up to each other. Or he's slithering, I'm walking, and it's just slithering, and we pass ways. It didn't look at me. It didn't even acknowledge me being there. I looked at it, and it looked like it was worn out. It looked like it was a beat-up snake, and it doesn't even bother with me, and it just slithers right past me. I could have reached down and touched it. It was that close, you know, and uh, and I just continue walking. I don't look back at it, you know, and I thought, like, looking back, like, I didn't look back at it to see where it went. When we passed, that was it. I was walking, it, it went or whatever, but it made me think, like, I've never looked back on my journey in this desert. I never looked back to see how far I had come, you know, all I could think about was moving forward, you know, and, uh... So I'm moving forward this whole time, and uh, eventually I, uh, I'm i just like staring at the night sky the whole time, and I'm walking, and uh, I come out of the desert back into the world I was born into, and I was just like, wow, like all I could think about was the stars, they were so beautiful, I couldn't even like I couldn't even paint the picture to show to describe how beautiful it was you know and for like a week I'm just thinking about this night sky I can still see it in my mind's eye you know no matter where I go I can still see it so another I make time to go back to the desert and I go back and I'm on a sand dune and it's not nighttime no more. It's daytime again. And about maybe a couple miles ahead of me is just sand dunes. But then I notice that it becomes flat. As like farther up. You know, and I'm like I started to think like that looks like that looks like the dry cracked ground I had seen. And it made me think like where am I walking to? And I asked myself, like, where am I walking to? And and then uh, the answer comes to me, and it tells me, the spirit tells me that you're walking to the U-shaped tree that you've seen in the ground that first time. You're walking to that. So I'm walking through these sand dunes, going over them, going over them, and I finally hit the dry cracked ground. And I'm walking on this dry cracked ground and there was like this haze all around. As if like everything was kind of like blurry or like foggy or something like that. And the further I walk into this dry cracked ground, it eventually lifts. And as far as the eye can see, I see something sticking out of the ground. Miles and miles away, my catch is like a glimmer of something and I was like that is the u-shaped tree and I'm walking through this dry cracked ground and I'm like all this work had been done all this time had passed all this trust had been gained within my connection with Heavenly Father my trust in him this you know I had to do all this work on myself here you know and uh I'm walking and I'm getting closer to the U-shaped tree and I can start to like make it out and as I get closer I'm just like drawn to it now 
they get fast. I get there faster and faster. Like it feels like I'm like getting sucked to it. Like it's it to me and me to it. And and I'm before I know it, I'm standing in front of this U-shaped tree. And I'm staring at it, sticking out of the ground, exactly how it was. And I noticed on the tree, like, that it wasn't dead. It just didn't have leaves and flowers. It just was this U-shaped tree sticking out of the ground. But it wasn't dead. It wasn't menacing and as scary as I first saw it. You know, it was like as if my eyes were renewed or these blinders were taken off. You know, and I'm just like, wow, like this is this is beautiful to look at. So I'm looking at this tree and it's a U and I'm looking up this side of the U and when I get to the top, this light appears right here and it goes across to this U, to this top. It like connects the top of this like U. And I'm like, what the heck? Like, this thing is changing in front of me. Like, it was a U-shaped tree, and then I saw this light appear at one, like a string of light, and it went over to the next one and connected. And I'm like, whoa. Like, what the heck? And I'm, like, tracing this string across, like... And right when I get to, like, the middle of the string, I see all these lights appear from that one thread and fall down and feel the U. The whole U is filled up with strings. And I like like pull my vision back a little bit to get the whole picture. And this U-shaped tree that was sticking out of the ground turned into a harp. It was the strangest thing. The light appeared, went across, and I looked at the light and all these lights fell and connected to the U-shaped tree the you part and I'm like it's a harp you know and uh, I'm just like what like what the heck like this thing just transformed right in front of me and I'm like overjoyed I have this overwhelming feeling just filled me up and I'm just like thank you thank you God like thank you for showing me this I'm not, don't have an understanding of all things, but this is beautiful. And this feeling I have is beautiful. Like, this whole trip is worth coming and all the work that I had to do just to see this U-shaped tree transform. And then I'm looking at this tree and then I get the prompting that there's more to look again and I'm like, look again, like what out, like what? But I'm like, it's telling me, look, there's more. So I look at the tree and I'm looking at all the strings and I'm tracing every string. I know every knot of the tree. And I follow a string down and, or I'm following the string up from the bottom. And right when I get to the middle, I see this drop coming down a string and I'm like, what this liquid drop is running down a string and i'm like what the heck so i pull my, i follow that that string up and i kind of like retract my gaze a little bit and follow the string up and i notice all these little drops running down these strings and i make my view all the way to the top and this u-shaped tree is a harp and there's bubbles running down or water running down these strings and I look at the top and this u-shaped tree that was a harp and a tree turned into a chalice like a cup that was holding this liquid in it like a glass but it was overflowing onto the strings and running down and it was still a tree, it was still the harp, and it was still somehow a cup that was managing to hold liquid in it that was overflowing and coming down the strings. I remember feeling some drops hit me, and it was the crispest and clean, like it was the, 
I remember getting a little bit on my lips, like tasting the water. And it was like the crispest, cleanest, chilled water that I, I, and it made me think like, I haven't had water this whole time I've been in here. I haven't eaten nothing. I haven't been hungry. I haven't been like famished, starving, nothing. And then I taste this water and it's the cleanest water that just instantly filled me up. I couldn't speak words, but my heart did. My whole body like rejoiced and like spoke, my heart spoke words that I'm sure that I couldn't even have written, that I can't describe. It spoke as if my spirit was speaking and it had spoken another language that I didn't understand my it was just so overwhelming looking at this i was so overwhelmed i i dropped to my knees right then and there and i submitted myself to god i said you are in charge i am nothing without you i couldn't have done none of this without you like you are everything you tell me where to go and I will follow you. You tell me what to do and I'll do it. You tell me where to go and I'll go. At that moment, I stopped living for myself and I turned myself to God. Most important moment of my life I didn't I couldn't understand how I lived so long without him how I lived so long without faith how I lived so blindly this world is designed to blind us it is here to distract us we have taken God out of everything schools you can't even you can't even have an opinion anymore without offending somebody else. God is real. His son is real. All those things that happened in the Bible didn't just happen then, it is happening now. Ask Heavenly Father to show you and He will show you. He knew it before I knew it. And I can I can't imagine being more grateful. And the story doesn't end there. But I wanted to tell my testimony. It ran an hour. But I think anybody and I thankful for anybody who watched it. I can appreciate it for what it is. Please share it. But I wrote my testimony out because it's so much more than I can just say here in an hour. I wrote it out and I'm going to make videos of each chapter and I'm going to read it each chapter so you can know the entirety of everything. I needed to make this video. Now's the time. Let this inspire you. Ask don't just believe me ask Heavenly Father if it's true and ask him to use you let me be proof proof to myself that we're all worth it if he can do it to me and show me it just shows how important each one of us is to him. We are all important to him. We are all his children. And he wants us all to make it back home to him. This world, there's so much going on right now. But we need to hold strong in Heavenly Father. And he will guide us through it. This storm 
of life that we're in right now with everything that's going on. Trust in Him. Thank you. Thank you for listening, if you're listening. And if it speaks to you, please leave a comment. I'm I'm an open book. If you want to read the story yourself, I'm all for it. Anybody can have access to this. I will not hold it from anybody. My testimony is my own. It is the strength and foundation the Lord has built me on. I am not shy. I am not ashamed of it. And there's nobody that can take it from me. There's nobody who can downplay it. Well, he can, but it isn't going to downplay it in me. Like I said, there's so much more that I'm going to make more videos to show you. As a testimony of Heavenly Father's love for us and His grace upon us. Thank you. And God bless you.